Representative Ryan. Good morning, everyone. Congressman Holden, always great to see you again. The uh, Congressman Holden, uh, by the way, uh, met my son over in Iraq, and you were very gracious with him when he was there. He's currently forward deployed as well, so thank you for your concern in the past. Right. Uh, my, my question is more of a, a philosophical question as concerning state-owned enterprises and things as opposed to not. And, and so the question I would ask you is, is that when, and I think Representative Topper's question was getting at a question I similarly had, and so I'm going to ask it from a slightly different perspective. A, a LCB's profit is actually, in a state-owned enterprise concept, actually somebody else's tax. So the consumer is actually paying a price that may or may not be reflective of what current market conditions would be if it were not a state-owned enterprise. I'm not sure if that question makes sense, but devoid of, of having free markets that are saying, so as an example, I heard the question that you would meet with suppliers all the time. I frequently have constituents come in who are consumers and who are asking the same question, where are they as part of the equation? So the first part of the question is, uh, what would the market look like in Pennsylvania if it were more competitive? And then the, the second question is that comes into this process is I recognize the board meets, but in the world that I'm familiar with after 45 years in industry is the market would be the board and the market would determine what's going to transpire versus not. And so the question is, how do we reconcile the two recognizing our profits at the LCB, which I think you've done a magnificent job of, really reflects the fact that the consumers may be paying what they might pay or may not be paying in a free market environment. So I think to answer that question, uh, as I stated previously, the first thing we look at is what selling prices are around us. And then one thing that act, um, 39 gave the uh, the WEP permits out to, uh, we currently have over a thousand WEP permit permittees that can sell wine. They buy off of us at the licensee discount rate. And so they are a double check to us, competition on the wine side um, <clears throat> of their product portfolio. Yes, they buy it from us, but they get to price it as long as they do not price it lower than they acquired it, but they acquired it cheaper than what we are retailing it at. So that is, a, a, in essence, a competition, uh, c keeping our prices uh, where they are with the consumers of Pennsylvania. I, I, think, I think also, you know, with, with the advent of, of uh, the Internet, um, you know, we've got direct wine shipping that, that gets, that gets uh, brought into, uh, that's part of Act 39. Uh, almost, uh, I think the goal for direct wine shipping is uh, $100 million. And so, so that's, that's kind of a, a market barometer as, as well. Um, you know, read currently, uh, the uh, direct wine shipper has to be a supplier, supposedly. However, we, we certainly know a lot of retailers that are shipping in, in, into the state. Um, people can cross the border. The days of, of state police sitting at the border at, at, at Delaware, I think, are over, thank God. You know, so I, I think that there, are, there is competition out there from a pricing standpoint, which I think might be where you were, where you were going, it is, is where, where, we're, where we're there. Dale's team does a good job in terms of looking at, at other states. Are we the cheapest out there? No. I mean, we have an 18 percent, you know, liquor, liquor tax. Delaware has, you know, no, no sales tax. They have a smaller Liquor, liquor tax. So I think we're at a competitive disadvantage when it comes to that. Where the landscape might be in terms of a more competitive competitive environment, I mean, to be honest with you, I, I really don't know. I mean, you can look at other at other at other non-control states, more open market states, and, and get a better answer to that. Whether that would be, uh, I don't know what that landscape would look like. It'd be, um, you could see Washington that, that that's changed. Uh, and some people can talk, talk about that, the state of Washington, uh, what happened with their taxes and what happened with their selection in various stores. Um, so I, I think it can go a, a lot of different ways. From, again, from a competitive price standpoint, Dale's team does a pretty good job in making sure that we are competitive on a skew-by-skew on a -skew basis. 
I would very much like to see that in a non-controlled state versus a controlled state. And, it's, and again, it's got nothing to do with, I think, the performance of the LCB has is, is, is been, you know, I think you've all tried to do what I think is a great job. What I worry about is, in, in my experience of markets, is that whenever there's a distortion between a marketplace and what can happen, it inadvertently encourages a black market. As, as you mentioned, a, a Delaware, Maryland uh, issue that's happened uh, where those kinds of things can happen when you've got an 18% PA liquor tax, those in and of itself create that kind of, so I mean, I would personally like to see that if the chair agrees. Thank you. 